I'd like to welcome our guest this morning, Jennifer Diggins, Director of Public Affairs at Nucor. Jennifer, I just want to get started with, you spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. Tell us what's going on there now, given all of what's happened with the debt ceiling discussions. What's going on from a legislative perspective? Well, I think everybody's catching their breath after a very long and partisan debate on the debt ceiling. Right now, nothing. Congress left town after they, they voted to raise the debt ceiling. Um, they won't come back until after Labor Day. So you start looking at the legislative days that are left between now and the end of the year, and there really aren't many. Can you give us an update as to where we stand with regard to EPA regulations on carbon emissions and anything else the EPA might be looking at? And then the follow-up would be, what are corporations planning for? What are they thinking about? Well, the EPA has been very active. There are a lot of expected regulations and rulemakings coming out, things that deal with greenhouse gas emissions as a result of the Supreme Court decision several years ago. And then they're taking a look at the ozone standard. So what we're planning for is sort of the unknown. There is a lot of uncertainty right now. Focus has been on greenhouse gas emissions, specifically carbon. Uh, but I would say uh, equally as important right now is the ozone standard. There's not supposed to be a review of the ozone standard until 2013. And what that really looks at is pollution across communities and who is in what they call attainment zones and unattainment zones. The reality is, is that to implement the review as EPA is saying that they'd like to implement it, it's going to be incredibly costly. And there are provisions in there that would allow the EPA to stop things like transportation and infrastructure projects if they were in communities that were found to be in non-attainment and these projects would lead to more air pollution. So it can be very costly. It can stop progress. And it's something that the Business Roundtable and groups like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce are really focused on right now and the uncertainty that brings to the business community. Second, I just want to ask you about um, ethanol subsidies. Are we going to see the U.S. Uh, removing ethanol subsidies? And what's the likely impact of that going to be? It was very interesting. This was a very hot topic for several months as Congress tried to reach an agreement for the curtailment of ethanol subsidies. Now, ethanol, the industry, really became the poster boy for energy subsidies as a whole. And there was an, a, a very good amount of time spent with members in the House and members of the Senate, especially members from regions where ethanol is a primary industry, trying to figure out a way to phase out these subsidies in the way that made the most sense. Surprisingly, that the agreement that had been reached was never included in the debt ceiling agreement that was signed by the president. Now, most view that agreement as dead and ethanol subsidies will continue. There likely won't be another piece of legislation that moves this year where that could be part of it. So it's expected that it will be business as usual, at least for the fall. Undoubtedly, the notion of subsidies is, is very hotly debated. And there seems to be some growing opposition to subsidies. Yet President Obama uh, is really yearning for the country to become more green. And he seems to suggest that we're going to need some of these subsidies to get those initiatives underway. And our question is really, what ought the role of the government be in terms of spurring new industries and new technologies from your perspective? Well, I think I'll start with the role that government ought not to take, which is the role of picking winners and losers in the energy debate picking politically popular energy forms to subsidize as a, in the hope that one day they will be more economical. You know, we are in such a delicate, you know, situation right now with our economy and our high unemployment rate. To continue throwing money at energy sectors in the hopes that they become more economical at the cost of the energy forms that already are economical seems like a very misguided notion. 